Hello and welcome to the Stockyard Industrial Lead. I'm Eric Miller and today we're going to be switching the standard distribution. We're just going to do a little operating today and I'm just totally winging it. I'm not using a, a switch list at all or anything like that. I'm just going to be, you know, I grab these cars and we're going to switch these three cars um, into the industry and then we're going to pull four out. And this is a special customer because there are two spurs that are side by side and the customer loads and unloads uh, box cars or reefers out of both of them. So I'm going to show you how that works. All right, so let's get operating. We've got our trusty proto throttle that we're going to be using today. We've got it set for the 1117 there, and we're going to start running. Now, first, we're going to pull the cars out that I want to take out. And so I'm trying to make this a little, you know, interesting. So I'm basically going to be pulling out this car here, and then this SPSF car, this Powder River and Chugwater, and then that Western Railway car. And we're going to leave the others there. And I'm going to show you how I do that. So let's get going. And by the way, this is all going to be in real time. Um, uh, so you can see exactly how this works. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is take off the end of train device, set that aside since that will get in the way of switching. We're gonna go ahead. Now, none of these uh, switches are locked. The only one that is locked is the one off the main line. So we're free to use these turnouts. I've already contacted the industry foreman um, and moved the flags. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pull out that Powder River and Chugwater car. So let's back up to that. So my strategy here is I'm going to collect all of the cars that need to leave the facility and then push them out onto our main line track. All right, now I'm going to go back and grab those three cars in a row that I need to get. I don't know about you, but sometimes I just like to come in and run trains without having a set schedule or anything. And just have fun.
Okay, now we've got our four pickups right in a row, so we can set those out on the main line to pick up or to take back to the yard. And let's hope we have enough room to pull them all back. We should be fine. I'll show you what I mean. I've got, so this is basically its own little spur off the main line. And so the track goes back behind the art office here. And so where that bumper is, that you see right there is the end of the track that we have to work with. So let's hope that our, we have enough space to do, pull the cars back and I think we do. Oh, plenty of room. Probably wouldn't be able to get one more car, but here's the end of the train right there. I just realized something. We actually didn't grab all of our cars. We got two left. Well, this works out perfectly since we wouldn't have had enough room anyways. All right, so. Let's go back and get the other two cars. And I see what the problem is. This car, the 60 foot SPSF car, um, coupler is way low on it. This is why I really hate these couplers that don't have screws in the boxes. I don't understand. Here, I'll show you. Um, you can see that just hanging low there. And I don't understand why it's so hard to just put a screw right there Let's see if we can do some on the spot repair work here okay so I basically snapped it back in there hopefully that works for the rest of our mini op session See, like, look at this old roundhouse car, for example. Wow, what a concept. There's a screw in the coupler box, so it actually stays put. I don't know. I don't know why that is such a hard concept to grasp. Seems like these manufacturers have to get so fancy. It's like, just put a... Screw, screw in the cupboard box, not that hard. But 
us modelers can always go back and do that ourselves, I guess. All right, now we'll see if we have enough room again. It'll be a little bit tighter because now we've got two longer box cars here, but I think we'll be good. There's the end of track over there. Nice. As you can see, plenty of room with the switch. Now, the other idea that we could do is if we didn't want to do, you know, two trips here, um, it'd be a little bit harder, but we could leave the cars that we want to um, drop off at the industry somewhere else and then, you know, grab the cars first and then come back. Um, but I think this works. This um, this track should have enough enough room to do stuff like this. Okay, now we will drop off our four cars. And the other cars we all have to bring back to the industry, including that Kansas City Southern car that we picked up inadvertently, just because it was kind of in the way. Now, what I do at this industry is sometimes I'll rearrange the cars a little bit. And I, my excuse is that I talk to the industry foreman and see what they want to do with their cars. I'll explain that as, as we get get back to the industry here. All right, let's push these safely. Well, we're past the the marker there, so I think this will be good. Okay. Usually I, I don't like to foul a switch, but this will be all right since we're just doing the work here. Pull it forward again. So as a general practice with this industry, what they like to do is have the larger cars closer to the industry since there's two tracks. And that just makes it a lot easier to load and unload those larger cars. Um, this is a customer that re both receives products and exports products. Um, so it, they're basically exporting things like um, a lot of meat products when in the reefers they're getting some vegetables um, and then they're also exporting recycled newspaper and box cars and also getting um, I believe auto parts is if I remember correctly so there's a lot going on with just this one little industry which is kind of fun okay so let's come up with a plan so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that this Kansas City Southern box car has not been unloaded yet and so the customer would like to have it next to the industry if possible so we can do that and then let's go ahead and we're going to put these two smaller box cars by the small door in front so that's great where they're located at and then we'll leave the cryotrans car at the other door so actually this will be a pretty easy switch job it turns out okay let's back it up off the brake. All right, so the other thing I want to explain with this industry, with the two tracks, how, how is it, you know, loaded and unloaded? Well, notice the tracks are very close together. They're a little closer together than I would have them in my yard. What I do is I try to space these apart so there's just a very slim amount of space between the box cars. I'm not going very fast here, so they can, they can be super close. Um, and so the, what the customer likes to do is uses uh, metal planks that go between the doors of the box cars to load. So basically what will happen is, um, you know, if, if, um, if they're able to do this in time before I come back to this industry and switch again, like, like for example, this time I was able to help them out and move this car closer to the door. 
Um, but in what will usually happen is that they'll unload this car first, and then after that's unloaded, they'll use a bridge plate um, to then load or unload this car through that box car, and then uh, repeat the process in reverse for loading this car first, the the metal bridge plate again and then loading this car, and then we're good to go. But what we're doing here is helping them out by moving this car up, up front. Now, if we come back here, say tomorrow, we've got some more cars for them. Um, this one's been unloaded, and you know maybe, maybe they already loaded it because they know we're coming. Then we could switch this car and push it over here. So this track can essentially be used as kind of a staging track as well, if, if that makes any sense. But um, general practice is that they, they like having the larger cars um, closer to the building because then uh, they don't have to load the larger car through the bridge plate and do that. Okay, let's square up the cryotrans car to the door. And then we'll do the Rock Island car next. What I find is, is little industries like this can have a lot of character, a lot of different things you can do. So one of the other features I have is notice that this door over here is a lot you know, the building's a little bit shorter. The door is different from those, not as big. So I try not to put any 60-foot cars or larger cars over here. I just try to put simple 50-foot box cars. And those are just fun things to think through. Okay, so now we're going to spot the that SPSF 50-footer across from that Rock Island car. I really like that CF7. It runs pretty well. Um, you might recall that I replaced the speaker in it uh, know, a month or two ago, but I noticed it's got a little bit of a crackling sound to it, which I'm not entirely sure why. The speaker before it had the same issue, so I'm wondering, I'm starting to wonder if it's a decoder issue. It's annoying me a little bit, but not too bad. So I might operate some more with it and see if it continues to be an issue or... I don't know. Figure out what I want to do. Oops. I was talking too much and kind of blew past the door a little bit. Okay. Okay, so now our work here is done. So we'll tell the industry foreman um, that our work's done here and we'll put these blue flags back. Um, I'm gonna do another video in the future about these blue flags and how they work a little bit more in detail and why I use them. I'm also gonna do another video on how exactly I give instructions to the crew from the industry. Like for example, um, if I'm not the one doing all the switching and I have a crew over that's like a guest crew, when I'm running op sessions, I'll have an engineer and a conductor. And so, um, you know, how do I give them instructions? So I'll go through that as well. Like specific instructions, like I just showed you, like this car should go here, this car should go in this small door. Um, the, you know, the customer wants this car moved to the, cl the track closer to the building, that sort of thing. All right, so I'm gonna 
as the conductor, I'm going to walk my end of train device back to the end of the train while the engineer is connecting back to our train. Um, looks like we've got that. We've got our turnouts aligned okay. There, we've got our end of train device back on there. I usually use an end of train device or a caboose for these uh, shorter switch jobs here in Albright, which is right next to the, really close to the Swift yard. Um, I usually just use the end of train device because we don't have any, you know, long reverse shoves like we do when we're switching Bellevue. all the way to the main line. Okay, now that we're done with our work here, we're gonna make sure to switch this back to the main line to the normal position. And then usually in this situation, I would go ahead and lock the turnout clock here. Um, obviously not doing that since it's already locked, it's fine. Um, again, something as layout owner, you can kind of decide if you're going to follow that 100% or not. Okay, well, this uh, video is already over 20 minutes long, so I think I've um, made you sit through enough operations. Um, be sure to comment below. Let me know if you like this sort of video or if there's any other videos you want to see in the future. Um, basically our train now is, our work here is done, so we're going to start running back to the yard and I'll just do a little uh, run by for you. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching today. And as, as I mentioned, the next couple videos, I'm going to show you some more details of the operations that I do, where I get the ideas from, some of the prototypical resources and that sort of thing. Um, so, but yeah, I hope, hope you enjoyed this and um, I'll see you next week here on the Stockyard Industrial League.